things. So I'll get started so that we have uh, uh, we have an interesting session here. Uh, let me see. I can get that. And I hope you, you can see my slides. Uh, yeah, please confirm me so that, that, so, that, so that I don't start speaking without uh, having the slides. OK, thanks. Um, so uh, I, I guess started here. Um, so this session is, is about Pulsar. It's not. Um, it's, a, it's it's more of a deep dive in one particular aspect of Pulsar. Um, so around replicated subscriptions, which is a newish feature. So it was introduced in 2.6 release, but then it uh, kind of got got improved in there. Uh, and uh, in the latest 2.8 is 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 when it's really uh, got really matured. Um, and this is like taking Pulsar replication to the next level. Um, just share a bit about, about myself. Uh, I'm Matteo Merli. Um, um, I'm CTO at the Extreme It's a company we offer um, a, a product that, that is based on Apache Pulsar. And I'm the co-creator and PMC chair for Pulsar. And I'm also a member of PMC for Apache Bookkeeper. And in the previous uh, uh, Professional and there I was at Splunk, Streamio, and, and, and Yahoo before that. So at, at Yahoo, when we started Apache Pulsar. So the agenda for today is first, I'm going to give like a brief uh, history of what your replication Pulsar means and why it is, has been that way. Um, and then uh, like a, a bit of like a looking at what are the typical replication patterns that, that we see in data systems. And uh, and why and from that why we do we need uh, subscriptions, and finally, probably the most interesting part is uh, how does it work internally? How can we pro provide this feature in in Pulsar? So for the history of replication, so the replication in Pulsar started at the very beginning. Um, the idea is that we, we wanted to have a, a full mesh of data replication across multiple clusters. Um, we also wanted to have this cluster to be uh, to have the highest level of isolation between them. So if a cluster has a failure or malfunctioning or is completely down, uh, we don't want other clusters to be affected by it. Um, data will will accumulate, uh, but the, there should be any performance degradation or any malfunctioning in the other cluster. So it shouldn't spread to all, all the other clusters. The other design decision was that. As a producer, when I'm publishing data, I I, I don't need to, to know where my data is going uh, to, to be routed. So th this is completely decoupled. Um, whenever I publish, I publish on my local broker. Data would be then uh, replicated some, somewhere else as well, but I don't need to specify it. Um, the finally, that we want to have this runtime configuration to add and remove clusters. So, uh, if if I, I I need to be to be able to change my configuration and my uh, topology of clusters at runtime immediately and uh, uh, with no like uh, downtime and so on. And uh, like all these kind of like designs, uh, the, the decisions stem from the, the first use case that we had at Yahoo for your replication, which is the Shepherd database. So this uh, is a um, it's, it is still uh, like a running in production at Yahoo, um, but it's a, it's a eventually consistent database uh, with global deployments to 14 regions all over the, the world. And, um, and typically like the, 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 what the, these storage uh, units will do is that they write on the local broker and, uh, and they read from the, uh, so the client will, will do local write and reads, the data gets replicated across multiple regions. And um, there are thousands of the database tables, and these tables are sharded. So all together, there are like millions of these table shards. And uh, the design here is that um, the application doesn't need to know where the data is. The ap application can, can also get moved to, to a different cluster if one cluster is down. But wh whenever some, something gets written, will generally be re replicated everywhere else. So, so that, uh, for example, like if you have a like a um, a comment uh, ap application, then a user write comments. That comment will get written into the local uh, 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 
data center. It will get re replicated to every other data center. So when I'm, uh, I'm, uh, if I'm, I'm, I'm in Europe and someone is in US, I will always read from my closest data center, but the data gets replicated every, everywhere. The so Shepard was migrated many years ago to to, to use Pulsar, and um, the way that it uses Pulsar is a, is a kind of like a local write ahead log, but also for geo replication. So whenever a data gets written into in, into Sherpa, the Sherpa will pub publish a message on the Pulsar topic. That all gives the durability and the re replication of the data. At the same time, this topic is geo replicated. So if I if you have a write that that, that is in US West. The, it gets published on the topic, the data will get to US East and say in the, in the Asian cluster. So now uh, the, all the replicas of Sherpa in all the regions, we, we have this new, this new data. And this is why we have this full mesh. Um, the biggest win when we migrated this uh, Sherpa database to, to Pulsar is that uh, the existing system was doing like a replication based on a fixed set, set, set of logs. Here, in, instead, we have like one log per each, one topic per each shard. So we have a lot of shards, um, but it is very easy to um, to configure like which data should go where, and uh, and also like we can apply different policies to different tables um, and change those policies. So it's it's a much more uh, flexible operation and that we can do, we can throttle, we can uh, say drop data for one uh, table if that's not needed anymore, we don't to do replicate it. If we have like a network bandwidth constraints, we can uh, prioritize certain tables versus others so that we can uh, give uh, being like more uh, e efficient in a, in a way that, that, that we would do this replication. So this is the, just to show like where this, this is coming from. Um, now, if you look at the job replication patterns here, uh, is that there are different ways in people in which people are using job replication. And um, one such, such example is like data ag aggregation. So you have um, multiple clusters. Um, you have data, data sources that are coming in uh, different clusters and um, and each data source will publish in its own local data center. So if you have a data source that, that is in US, will publish on the personal cluster that, that is located in US. And um, data source in Europe will publish there. So the data is immediately published on, on the local cluster, which is more available to these data source, it's close to that. And uh, so the data is stored there. And then the data eventually it is also aggregated into a main process cluster. And typically this you want to do that so that, that, that you have a central location with, where you have all the data and, then, and now you can run either like a streaming or, or, or batch uh, processing jobs and uh, analyze all the data. And then finally, for, for example, one such, such example that, that uh, finally put the, the, the results into a database. Um, that's one ex such, such example. So, uh, it's, it's kind of like a, like a one direction of replication here. Another uh, example uh, is like active active. Um, this is um, has some advantages. Uh, so in, in this case, like you have a single data source of events and you publish in uh, in uh, in one person cluster. Now the data is replicated. So in this cluster, we have uh, the processing job also runs on the on the data that is published on this cluster. And now it, it, it also writes the results back into that cluster. Um, and we also re replicate the data into uh, US East, for example. And, and in US East, we do the same identical processing job. Um, the advantage here is that uh, we have complete redundancy, both at the, at the storage level as, a, as a, at, the, at the processing level. So at this point, it doesn't matter whether the, the, the data source is uh, in US West or US East, it is um, immaterial here. So you can have data coming in both, but you, the result that, 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 that you will have from your processing job will be the same in both clusters. So if one of them is, uh, uh, goes down, you don't have to do anything. Uh, the other cluster will have all the data. We have all the results of, of the processing of that data. Which is good. Uh, the downside of this is that uh, you have to pay for twice your processing cost. So that's a, that's a very, uh, which can be quite a lot if you have like a, 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 a big scale of, of, of data. So um, that's kind of a cost concern here. 
Um, the alternative to this active active typically is this uh, active passive. Um, so I'm writing the data into one process cluster. I'm doing processing. I'm writing my result into my database. Um, I'm also replicating the data into a different process cluster so, so that if US West completely goes down, I don't lose all my data, uh, but I'm not doing the processing. So what will happen is for this active pass is that at some point uh, we need to uh, migrate and say that do the processing, uh, spin up a new proce processing cluster in US East and then re resume that part and, uh, and switch the data sources to, to, to US East. Uh, so th this way we avoid the uh, we avoid having to pay for twice the, the processing cost, but at the, at the same time the operation involved for, for a cluster failover is is more involved. So why do we need to subscriptions and what does that mean and what problem does it solve? Uh, so if you look at the, at the active passive, we say that we can do a failover, but the, the failover is complicated. So um, the problem here is that we had this pipeline that, that was running in US West, and uh, now the POSA cluster in US West is completely on fire. Um, the cluster is down, so the, the Flink cluster here cannot, cannot, cannot process the data. So we can easily switch the data source to US East. That's fine. We, have just a, we, we can use DNS and change the, them to point to, to, to the US East cluster, and that is fine. The problem though is that where are we get reading the, the data from? And the problem here is, is that the, the message ID or the offset that, that you are consuming in US West are not necessarily the same in US East. So any consumer or any processing job will not know where, where, it, has, where it has to resume reading from. So the design goal for duplicate subscription is to have subscription that we can keep state in sync across the different cluster. Um, and uh, the idea is, is that we want to, to be able to do that within a, a sub-second time frame um, and uh, across multiple different geographical regions. And we want to be able to do a, a safety problem when, when one cluster is down. Uh, again, we're not targeting multiple clusters down. We want to just to, to target one, one region being down. So the idea here is that, is that uh, if I'm doing a consuming, uh, I should be able to just uh, switch my uh, processing job to, to go from US West to, to, to US East. And it should be just resuming, consuming from the same position or very close to the same position that where I left over in the US West. Uh, so it's, so it's, it, it, it works like, like, like magic in the, in the sense that, that now the, the failover operation is a, it, be, it becomes trivial. Just like a DNS change, and uh, and uh, and the and the both both producers and, and consumers can can resume. So the API for subscription is, again is a, is a, is very simple. You just have to to mark your subscription as I I wanted this to be replicated. So re replicate sub subscription states true when you get your consumer, and that is enough to uh, to enable all the machinery that, that ha happens behind. So what is that machinery? Uh, um, so I'll start that, that um, we have that um, few challenges to do this, um, um, to re re replicate this state. And the, the challenges are around that uh, the full mesh re replication, it is very convenient uh, because you publishing in one data center and you can consume from any data center. You can publish from multiple data centers and consume from one. So it's a is the most flexible way that, that that you can do it, but it also makes things um, uh, a bit more complicated because you can since you can have writers in any of the regions at the same time. That means that there is no that there is not a global total ordering of, of messages. So there is total ordering if you are if you for all the producers that that, that are within one single region, but the moment you have producers in multiple regions, then consumers in different regions might see different sequences of messages. So for example, like if I have um, a producer that is uh, in cluster A and a, a consumer in cluster A and a producer in cluster B, the and consumer in cluster B, these consumers 
we'll see the same messages in order for the same producer, but they might see different interleaving orders for producer A and B, because there are different producers that get serialized in different ways in the local cluster, and then they get replicated uh, between each other later. So that's why we don't have global total order. Um, and I mean, and that is by design. We, do, we don't want to have that because we, we, we don't want to, to we don't want to have, to have the coordination across the multiple uh, clusters to avoid interdependency between these clusters. So of course, like per producer order is respected. Uh, also, like the per region order is respective. So uh, like all the consumers in one region will see all this, the exact same sequence of messages, but consumers in different regions might see differences. Um, and the other challenge that is probably the, the bigger one here is that the messages of these are generated independent in each region. So uh, the same message will have different, different message IDs in, in different regions. And uh, the monotonically increasing sequence, uh, it is only valid for within one region, but uh, since you have like a message one, will have different message IDs depending on which cluster, if it's cluster A, cluster B, and so on. So um, we, we, do, we don't have a reliable way to um, correlate one message here to one message there. And also that if I have, and since we don't have a to, 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 total order, we, we cannot easily say that if I've seen this message one in class of A means that I have seen everything that came before in that because the sequence might be different in class of B. So these are kind of like the, uh, the main problem here and uh, the way with that we've been solving them is that um, we need to establish a relationship between message IDs in different cluster um, and uh, since these message IDs are not not comparable but what we need to do here is that um, what we want to know is that if you are in cluster a and you have consumed everything to say one me message one from cluster a uh, then we need to, be, to have some correlation point in which we can say uh, for, for sure that if you've seen this in cluster A, you have you must have consumed everything up to this other message D, say message D five in cluster B, and uh, and the same message uh, six in cluster C. So that means that we are establishing a relationship from one point in the topic to different points in the topic in the, in, the, in the other cluster. Now, if we can do that, then we can, uh, then we are like 90% of the problem is solved for us. Um, so, and the, the way we do this is, um, we created this map, which is called a cross snapshot. So this is kind of the result of, of, of the, this operation, but this is like what we want to achieve, uh, um, create. And once we know that we have this relationship, so uh, this, this snapshot gets created and and gets stored into the lo local topic. But the 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 information that that is stored into this snapshot is that we have a local message ID. So if, if I'm cluster A, um, this is a snapshot for cluster A, and say that the message ID that is like ledger ID one nine two uh, and one two one one two three one two three, this is one my local message ID. This is correlated to two different message IDs in the other clusters. Uh, so in cluster B, that would be uh, these one, two, three, four, four, five, six, six, seven, eight. And in cluster C, it would be a different message ID. So uh, five, six, five, five, one, three, four, two, one. So th this basically has, uh, has been written down. It, this is a mapping that from this um, message ID in cluster A, this is correlated to class, this other message this in the other clusters. Therefore, that if I have consumed everything up to this message in cluster A, I can advance my cursors in the other clusters to these positions, because that means that if you, if you have consumed everything here, you must have consumed as well everything in the cluster B up to this, this, this position. So how can we uh, construct this, this snapshot and how can we because of this relationship here. So the, the idea is that we, we, we inject special marker messages. So these markers um, are injected through the data, data replication path. And it is effectively a, 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 distributed, a distributed RPC mechanism. So I am, I'm, I'm sending a marker, say that I want to create a snapshot and I publish this marker in my local topic. 
Now, this marker gets replicated to the other regions, to every, every one of them, um, and at, at, at least in the, in the context of this particular topic. And uh, now, each region will respond by publishing to their own lo local topic with, the, with the, their own la latest message. And now this marker, this response marker will get uh, fl will, will flow back to the to the cluster A for in this case. Um, so this basically like we are like um, flowing from one cluster to, to the others and then com com coming back. And the point of this is that uh, we want to make sure that we catch everything that uh, is before and after these messages. So let's see what is uh, a, a uh, the, what this, this, this marker look, look like. So the first uh, aspect is that, okay, cluster A sends this uh, snapshot request. Say I'm cluster A, uh, this is a, a new snapshot ID. So this is like UID, and this gets sent to both cluster B and cluster C. Um, now, cluster B and cluster C will both respond uh, by saying that, okay, for this, this is a response for this particular snapshot ID, uh, I am cluster B, and uh, my latest message ID in my topic is this uh, one, two, three, four, four, five, six, six, seven, eight. And the same will do cluster C. So the source cluster, cluster A in this case, will wait for other responses. And uh, once it has all the responses, then it, it, it has constructed uh, the, the, the snapshot. So, the, uh, again, this is a like sequence diagram. So, cluster A, we, we send both requests. We, we wait for both responses, and it will uh, establish that the message ID, uh, the latest message ID, when 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 we receive the response. At, at, that, at that point, we basically we be we have our own our own snapshot completed, and we can write this snapshot into our lo local topic for storage lo to to, to, to store it locally. And this snapshot is only meaningful for cluster A. So this, this, this snapshot itself will not get replicated. Um, the question is that this can become uh, slightly more complicated um, in the sense that this one single round, it works if you, if you do have uh, two clusters only, but say if you only have cluster A, cluster B, uh, if we do have three clusters, three or more clusters, uh, we have to do a second round uh, of it. And the reason for, that, for this is that we want to be able to catch all the messages that are be, were being exchanged by cluster B and cluster C that cluster A has not seen yet. So that's why we do two rounds of it with, with three or more clusters. And, um, and, we, and, we, and we take the message of the, of the first round at the point we, we, we get this uh, snapshot completed, but is it, it is this, this, the same process. So we do one round and then we do a sec second round and we take the message ID of the first round for cluster A. So the, um, now this cluster snapshot, we say that we store it in the local topic. It's published as a local message. Again, it is a marker message. It's not, it's not going to be seen by, by the consumer, just by the, by the brokers. And um, the broker can actually are, are using this as a way that, so when, do, when, when they scan through the topic, they will load the snapshot and they will keep a cache of the, of the latest end snapshots so that uh, we can use them to advance the, the sub, sub, subscription. So the way it works is that um, when a subscription cursor move, moves ahead, so when applications are acknowledging messages in cluster A, now, uh, we can check if this consumer has crossed the boundary of one snapshot. And if that is the case, then we can say um, we can advance the cursor in the in the other regions. So the broker will uh, publish a message in the topic, uh, which is a, a sub sub subscription and update command. Um, it gets published on the local topic and replicated to, to BNC in this case. And it's telling them to uh, you should, you should advance this subscription to this new position. Therefore, like, even if, if you don't have uh, connected consumers there, that would be the sub subscription we, we keep advancing based on the update on the, on the updates from cluster A. So if you're tying this all together, um, this uh, 
Review, review snapshot and markers, uh, machinery, it is being done. So each topic will have its own uh, cycle of these snapshots. And uh, each region is going to do the same. So if you have cluster A, B, and C, each cluster will do the same. Um, so A will create, will create its own snapshots, uh, B will create its own snapshots, and C as well. Um, and this mechanism works like from two to 100 clusters. So, uh, Yes, there is some some uh, some uh, small amount of markers involved, but th th these markers are very tiny, so there's not not, not a lot, lot of traffic. And also, that the, um, these markers are are getting paused if there is no traffic on the topic. So that's kind of like a, if the tra traffic stops, then the this marker flow is, will also will also stop. But by default, that we we do this uh, snapshot every one second. And the reason for doing this one second is that um, you, if you have a, like a cluster failover, basically if you move from cluster A to cluster B, um, the subscription will be uh, not updated for last one second. So you, you get at most uh, up, up to one second of duplicates. So you can increase that uh, period, so say to 10 seconds or 30 seconds, and, and now you have like a, 10 seconds of two of two duplicates uh, at the at the I mean, I mean you you trade this uh, duplicate amount for uh, the overhead of running these uh, uh, markers uh, and snapshot process. So you, you can tune that depending on the, on the needs, but by default is one second, which makes sense in most cases. And actually, yeah, uh, it's, 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 it is not too too many of of, of duplicates in most cases. Uh, yeah, and it can be lower as well. So it can be running at every hundred millis, for example, like to have like a, a less, less duplicates in the worst case. So uh, the, try to wrap up the the, the the thing here. So this duplicate subscription is a feature that, that is pretty unique to Pulsar. Uh, I'm not aware like any 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 other like messaging system that, that that is offering this kind of feature, and it solves a very complex problem. Uh, and it's important because like, this is something that every organization that is doing a like, multi-cluster is is facing. How can I um, uh, do cluster failover for my consumption, my, my my processing in a in a safe and easy way? Um, and uh, it is it, 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 it's sort of really making the cluster failover like a, a trivial operation at, at that point. And it, it could be easier to use from a user perspective. You just have to enable that that flag and. Uh, and the and the replication will 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 happen. Um, so give it a try and uh, and give us feedback around it. So this this what what I got. I'm very happy to 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 answer any questions on the replication or the uh, or the replication subscription and so on. Please ask it in the. Okay, I'm seeing one, one, one question. So I'm gonna read it out. So um, in the Q&A section, the cursor snapshot uh, request, does that include the message so that the response can include the ID of the equivalent message or just the message being known to that broker? Not clear how X broker correlation is achieved. Um, so it does not include, the request does not include anything. Um, this is basically a way that, um, the correlation is, is, is achieved by, um, we have these two topics for, for example. So I'm sending from the, when the, when the, when we start the snapshot, the, the, the first one, we go on cluster B and then it goes back. Um, whatever, like we, we know that from, from the last message, we know that these, we have received everything from that point into the, uh, from cluster B. Because the it goes on on the same data path, so we know what was the last message D in class of B at that point, because that, that's what the, the response of class of B contained is the message D of the last message, well, of the marker that that, that arrived with the request. Um, so that means that everything before that in class of B is already be seen by the and and really got it when we fin finalized the, the snapshot. And I'm not sure if if I make it made it clear, but is a uh, is a uh, is because like 
you, you have data coming from one side and data can come from, from the other side. And, um, but if you do the, the full circle, you're, you're, you're guaranteed that you're gone. At, at this point, this message, you're gonna have seen everything from the other cluster because it went through back, back and forth on, on the same path. Does it make, make, make sense, my answer, or make it better or worse? Any other questions? Please write it on on the on the, on the Q and A or or on the chat time. Um, so there's okay. So so there's no actual exact message decorrelation. It's just a relative assumption of the replication state. Uh, yes, we don't do like one by one message ID tracking because that would be uh, that can be like billions of messages. So we can but. We, we just establish relationship from one point to another point and at these intervals of one second. So every one second we have one correlation and we are only advanced when we cross this uh, snapshot. So every one second we have a new snapshot and one new re re relationship so that we can advance the course in, in the other region to, to, to the next point. And uh, and yeah, this, 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 this is arbitrary message ideas, but uh, at the end of the day, the, the snapshot is consistent in, in which way that the snapshot ID is um, guarantees that everything in your old cluster has been seen when you reach this point in cluster A. Um, I, okay, thanks. I assume there's some potential for some sort of split brain in this situation. How does the conflict resolution happen? Um, so if there's a split brain here, um, essentially the, the protocol here requires that um, all the clusters are available uh, to create the snapshots, not, 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 not to do the fillover. Um, the reason is that if you're not receiving answer from one cluster, then we cannot do the um, the snapshot uh, because we, we we wouldn't be knowing everything that all the messages that, that there might be some messages in the, in the cluster that, that we have not seen. So um, it requires all the clusters to be available to, to get a snapshot. Um, if one cluster it is not available, then we we we, we cannot create a snapshot so that that we have. We, we we cannot have updated the subscription, so that's why I was mentioning that we um, the, the the design here is to um, survive one region being down. Uh, if you have more region down, then uh, the we cannot create. Uh, so when 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 we have all the sub sorry, when we do have more all the uh, regions up, we can create all these snapshots. If one cluster goes down, we can do the failover. And uh, until the cluster comes back up, we cannot create more snapshots. So if you have like multiple multiple regions coming up and down, then uh, it might not uh, get updated. But if you have a one cluster goes down, you, you can fail over everything for two other clusters and that will work. So there's there's no split brain possible, I think there, because is. Like if we if we get all the information that that we need, we have the, the, the snapshot. Otherwise, we uh, we have to to skip it essentially. Okay, another question. Very good. Uh, so, what if, for example, it goes down that is in the primary region the, the, the data source is connected to? Um, uh, yes. So, 
if I'm producing on my local cluster and some of the cluster goes down, then I wouldn't possibly even know uh, about that. So I, I don't have to do anything. So yes, you, you don't have re redundancy. You just, you, you're just publishing locally and the data does not get duplicated, but everything keeps working as, as before. Uh, so, but the data is re replicated in the local cluster. So you have, you have multiple copies in one cluster, you don't have multiple clusters availability. Yeah, thank you for, for good, 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 good questions. Okay, if, if there are no more no more questions, I, I say you can wrap it up. You can always uh, reach out to me. I'm on the Apache Slack. Slack. Uh, uh, th there is also a personal channel, uh, just or, or or DM me there, or, or just ask on the on the on the post, post channel. You can also uh, join the the Pulsar uh, Slack channel. I I didn't put the the, the links here, but uh, you can find it on the on the Pulsar web page. I'm just leaving this here. So if you want to contact either me or other members of the post community, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing Larry here. So uh, just ask uh, five questions. There's a mailing list and, and, and Slack channels that, that you can ask anyone questions there. Okay, thank you everyone. And uh, actually we will see that in a, in a word or so, I have one other presentation on the uh, exclusive producer. So it's, again, it's a deep dive. So if you enjoy this one, probably this is like also like a, not, not, not a similar topic, but it's a kind of like similar kind of format of deep dives into a uh, feature of Portal. So hopefully we'll see that in a, in a bit. Thank you everyone. Bye.